Cutting and Pasting What Ellen Montgomery's Island Scrapbooks Reveal About Her Reading As most of you know, Ellen Montgomery was a record keeper of the first order. Volumes of journals, hundreds of letters and scrapbooks, 12 of which contained the bulk of her published stories and poems. She also kept scrapbooks of her own book reviews and mementos of her children's early years and several scrapbooks of her own mementos or souvenirs. All of these scrapbooks are kept either in the Guelph University Archives or here at the Confederation Center in Charlottetown. There are two souvenir scrapbooks she kept during her Cavendish years, the years in which she was beginning to publish many poems and stories and eventually her first novels, including Anne of Green Gables. These scrapbooks represent about 27 years' worth of clippings and souvenirs. Elizabeth Epperly's book, Imagining Anne, shows most of the pages in these two scrapbooks and includes many explanations and insights into the items on the pages, especially the personal items that Montgomery kept from various events in her life. Montgomery began putting items into the blue scrapbook in 1893. Most items in this scrapbook are from the 1890s. The red one she began about 1901. There are A few items that date well before that, but most are from that decade. The scrapbooks contain hundreds of items, personal souvenirs such as programs and articles from Montgomery's Prince of Wales College days, her years teaching in Biddeford, relics from schools and lampposts, fragments of fur from her pet cats, write-ups of weddings and obituaries of family members and friends, her own cyanotypes, which are blue-processed photographs, with scenes of home, and so forth. But there are also many items clipped from magazines, newspapers, and other sources. Poems, pictures, even jokes, and anecdotes that must have meant something to her, or that perhaps she thought would be useful reminders and inspirations for her writings. When Betsy's book about the scrapbooks was published in 2008, my fellow Ella Montgomery Literary Society member, Christy Worcester, began to search for and find sources of some of these clippings. She wrote about her discoveries for the 2008 issue of The Shining Scroll, the Ella Montgomery Literary Society newsletter, which can be found online. After Christy died in 2016, her family asked me to catalog some of her vast Montgomery collection, and while doing so, I decided to continue her search for more sources of items in the scrapbooks. What Christy and I discovered revealed much about the kinds of periodicals Montgomery was reading during those years and how they might have influenced her. In the following slides, I will show just some of the sources Christy and I found and collected. A table of contents listing all the items pasted into the two scrapbooks with source information included is in process. Many of the periodicals containing the items have been donated to the Ella Montgomery Institute at University of Prince Edward Island by the Worcester family and myself. It is known as the Worcester Collins Collection and is available for study. Let's begin with the first page of the blue scrapbook. The two calendars and the horseshoe-shaped buckle, shoe buckle, along with many of the personal and unique items in the scrapbooks, are identified in the Epperly book. These three items date from 1893 and 94. Many of the colored pictures of flowers and fruits pasted in the scrapbooks, such as the two cutouts on this page, were from John Lewis Child's seed catalogs. The Child's catalogs contain many original colored illustrations of Child's impressive selection of plants, and the catalogs are now extremely rare. They were printed on thin newsprint and probably ended up as kindling in Waterloo stoves or, shall I say, in outhouses. But some are in archival collections and can be seen online. John Lewis Childs was the first plant specialist to produce seed catalogs, beginning in 1875. He owned 1,000 acres of land in Long Island, New York that were mostly devoted to growing and cultivating a wide range of flowers, fruits, vegetables, and exotic plants. Montgomery may have been a subscriber to the Child's catalogs. At least six, from 1893 to 1900, are represented throughout the two island scrapbooks, especially the blue one. The spike of pink and yellow gladiolus was cut 
from the 1895 Child's Catalog. The cluster of purple gladioli was cut and pasted later on page 33 of this scrapbook. The strawberries were also from the 1895 Child's Catalog. Note that Montgomery pasted the strawberries upside down on her scrapbook page, perhaps to frame the page more artistically. Those luscious raspberries and the bright red drink at the top of the page, although not pasted into the scrapbook, suggest the raspberry cordial in Anne of Green Gables. Montgomery pasted the floral card with a picture of a sailing ship on the portrait of the young woman from the cover of the 1894 Easter issue of Youth's Companion, the, is the theme of the poem, My Ship by Lillian Gray, just below the portrait, is similar to that of Montgomery's story, The Schoolmaster's Bride, which appeared in Every Woman's World, July of 1917. It also appeared in Anne's House of Dreams in the same year. Part of the poem reads, One day I watched a white-winged ship sweep out beyond the harbor bar. She bore from me my dearest hope and sailed toward the evening star. Long months have passed, but ne'er again mine eyes have seen the ship I love and long for so. Montgomery penned a line in her 1899 poem, When the Fishing Boats Go Out, that reads, As sweeps the white-winged fishing fleet across the harbor bar. The poem was first published in Youth's Companion, September 1899. The source of the poem, My Ship, has not been determined. The Roses and White Narcissus illustration is from the Child's 1893 Fall Catalog, two years earlier than the catalog cutouts on page one. The Girl Sitting on the Crescent Moon is from an ad for Crescent Bicycles from the Youth's Companion, 1894 of April, page 200. The poem in the Portrait Gallery is from the January 1893 Ladies' Home Journal. It is reminiscent of Montgomery's own poem, Great Grandmama's Portrait, published in November 1915, McLean's. The young woman in the white dress with puff sleeves is from the cover of the May 1895 Ladies' Home Journal. The profile of the woman, reminiscent of the George Gibbs portrait on the first edition of Anne of Green Gables, is from a pear soap ad in the Ladies' Home Journal, September 1893. The poem, Dorothy, A Disappointment, by Charles B. Going, was published in the Ladies' Home Journal, March 1894, and tells of a man's disappointment when he discovers his ideal, Dorothy, is married. The collage on page one of the May 1895 issue of Ladies' Home Journal is described as a study in leaf forms, and it accompanies an article on geraniums. The flowering geraniums are given the most attention, but scented geraniums, such as the apple-scented one in Anne of Green Gables, are mentioned. This page contains two items, items that suggest two of Montgomery's stories. The young woman at the desk is an illustration for William Dean Howell's serial, The Coast of Bohemia. It was in the Ladies' Home Journal, August 1893. The caption reads, There was no one to whom she could own it but her mother. Perhaps it was an inspiration for Montgomery's story in the home of her mother from the Western Christian Advocate, 15th of June, 1910. The poem, Forget Not the Old Folks at Home, by Louise S. Upham, was partly quoted in Montgomery's story, Miss Carston's Encore, found a few months ago by Ben Lefebvre. This was one of the undocumented Montgomery stories in the Wilmshurst bibliography that Montgomery had listed as Miss C's Encore. The only known publication of the story so far was in the Shelby County, Missouri Herald in January 1904. It is not clear where this clipping of the poem came from but was probably from a local paper. And no further information on this poem has been found. The only copy of the poem I found is this one in Montgomery's scrapbook. Madeline S. Bridges, the author of A Touch of Nature, was the pseudonym of Mary A. DeVere, born in Brooklyn, New York, in 1844. She was best known for her poem Life's Mirror, which contained the phrase, 
Give to the world the best you have, and the best will come back to you. This clipping is from the Ladies' Home Journal, March 1895. Montgomery was in Biddeford at that time, teaching school. The drawing of the young woman in the diaphanous gown was the cover of Ladies' Home Journal, April 1893. The cards with pressed flowers on this page date from 1891 when Montgomery was in Prince Albert and 1894 when she was teaching in Biddeford. I mention this to point out how Montgomery placed items from different years on the pages of her scrapbooks. The full-blown pink rose is from the 1895 Child's Catalog, the same catalog from page one of this scrapbook. The clipping of the first song sparrow is from the Youth's Companion, 14th February, 1895. The note on the poem says it was written in 1889, but the first printings I've been able to find were several in 1895. It was written by Lucy Larkham and reprinted frequently at least until 1957. The cartoon entitled Bashful is from Judge's Library, September 1894. This was right after Montgomery arrived in Biddeford to teach. The vase of hyacinths is from a John Lewis Child's catalog, probably from fall 1893, although the vase has a different coloration than the one in the scrapbook and the hyacinth at the back of the bouquet is deep purple rather than blue, as in the scrapbook. Madame du Plessis was considered one of the most beautiful women in Paris. She died young of consumption and was the inspiration of Alexandre Dumas' character in his novel and then stage play La Dame aux Camélias, also known as Camille. Montgomery may have clipped this portrait from Ladies' Home Journal, January 1893, as a reminder of her mother, who had suffered the same fate in 1876. Several Montgomery characters also died of consumption, Ruby Gillis in Anne of the Island, Hester Gray in Anne of Avonlea, and others. As Betsy points out in her book, the poignancy of Duplessis' short story would have thrilled Anne Shirley. The small round photo of a young woman is from an ad for lanoline products in the Ladies' Home Journal, December 1895. This was when Ella Montgomery was in Halifax for the college, her college year. The clipping below the lanoline girl is probably from a local paper and is entitled, Not Romantic, The Story of a Sprained Ankle. It may have inspired two scenes in Anne of Green Gables. Anne spraining her ankle while walking the ridge pole at Diana's party, and later, Gilbert's rescue of Anne from the Lake of Shining Waters after her Lady Elaine Barge sank. This portrait was the centerpiece of an ad for Fry's Cocoa in the Illustrated London News. 21st November, 1891, painted by German artist Conrad Kiesel. It is strikingly similar to another portrait that Montgomery pasted on page 60, also from the Illustrated London News, 18th of June, 1892. This portrait is called Sea Poppies, painted by N. Prescott Davies. There are several illustrations of young women in Greek or Roman costumes in the scrapbooks. The pink and blue gloxinias are from the spring 1896 Child's Catalog. The poem, entitled August, is one of a series of poems published each month in the 1894 Youth's Companion issues. The question arises, why this one and not the others? The red pansy is from an 1899 John Lewis Child's Catalog. Purple and white pansy from the same page is on page 38 of the blue scrapbook. The single gladiolus bloom was carefully trimmed from a child's 1894 catalog. The beautiful Mrs. Donaldson is from the Ladies Home Journal, January 1894. As Betsy pointed out, Emily Donaldson was the niece by marriage of U.S. President Andrew Jackson's wife, Rachel Donaldson Jackson, and was the hostess in the White House following Rachel's death in 1828 before Jackson was inaugurated as the seventh president. The cover of the Ladies' Home Journal for 1893 is the source for this clipping and illustrates the poem The New Year Minuet. Only publication found for the poem in the barn so far is the Cincinnati Inquirer, 15 February 1879, which attributed it 
to Youth's Companion. This clipping may have been in a local paper and may have inspired Montgomery's poem In the Hayloft, published in 1906, and several other poems featuring children playing in barns. The Portrait of a Lady by J. Sant was in the Illustrated London News, April 30, 1892. The Little Brown Dog at the Door was from Youth's Companion, 26 July, 1894. And it's another version of The Dog at His Master's Grave featured in Anne of Green Gables. It also recalls Little Dog Monday from Rilla of Ingleside, published in 1921. The Leaf is from Child's 1895 Mayflower Catalog, which I will show in the next slide. The Little Kitten is from an ad for artist Henriette Rahner's paintings in Ladies' Home Journal, January 1896. Tulip is from the Fall, 1895, Child's Catalog. The little orange anemone at the top of that page was cut out and placed at the bottom of page 43 of the scrapbook. And the pink and white crocus was cut out and placed back on page 10 of this scrapbook. Montgomery cut out and pasted the small multicolored leaf on page 49 of the blue scrapbook seen on the previous slide. The larger leaves she placed here on page 55. Note the fading of the small leaf from its original pink to white. This page from the child's 1895 catalog is reminiscent of the leaf collage she cut out and pasted on page 13. The gigantic lily was trimmed from the 1900 child's catalog. Montgomery turned the lily upside down to place it on the page. The blue morning glory and the red and blue pansy are from the Child's 1896 catalog. I'll show the page with the pansy on it and a few slides on. Notice that Montgomery turned the morning glory a bit when pasting it on the page. Montgomery may have been inspired to create a page of cats in the red scrapbook, which will be shown later. After seeing this portrait of Henriette Rahner, surrounded by some of her pictures of different cats in Ladies' Home Journal, September 1895, Montgomery cut out Rahner's painting of two kittens to paste on this page. Rahner was famous for her many paintings of kittens and cats, one of which was just shown on page 49. The small round picture of the smiling girl was an advertisement for Risley's Cucumber Complexion Toilet Soap in the Youth's Companion, 2nd of August, 1894. The red roses from the cover of Child's 1896 catalog were used on pages 66 and 70. The rose bouquet is also from the child's 1896 catalog. The pink and yellow combination calls up the pink roses and buttercups Anne Shirley arranged on her hat for Sunday school. Yet another picture of a young woman in a white puff-sleeved dress was on the cover of the August 1895 Ladies' Home Journal. Anne Shirley longed for a white dress and, of course, puffed sleeves. The poem, The Sleeping of the Wind, appeared in the July 1896 Ladies' Home Journal. Its author, Charles B. Going, was also the author of the poem Dorothy, A Disappointment, that was pasted on page 13 of this scrapbook. John Reed's thoughts includes the lines, and Sister Jane and myself, we have learned to claim and yield. She rules in the house at will, and I in the barn and field. Invokes Matthew and Marilla's situation, as Betsy pointed out in her book. This poem first appeared in the March 1873 issue of the Atlantic Monthly, and was referred to in several poetry journals of the period. The source of this printing, however, has not yet been found. The giant moonflower and the red and blue pansy on page 63 are from the 1896 John Lewis Childs catalog. The weeping Magdalene is from Muncie's June 1895. The sources of the other two portraits of young women on this page have not been determined. 
The portrait of the young woman is from the Ladies Home Journal, May 1896, advertising Cosmo Buttermilk Soap. Did this ad, perhaps from 1896, influence Montgomery's look for the photograph taken a few years later? Note she even put a little pin in her hair, in just that exact spot of in the ad. Moving on to the red scrapbook. The large holly wreath with the red bow is from the cover of the Christmas edition of the Ladies' Home Journal in 1902. A photograph of Sally Ward, known as the Kentucky Belle, is pasted in the center of the wreath that was published a year and a half later. The September 1902 issue of Delineator yielded several items. One wonders why Montgomery chose these two pictures and not the one of the woman in the white dress at the upper left. Another picture from the cover of this issue of the Delineator is on page 9. The Kodak ad is from Ladies' Home Journal, June 1901. The young woman in the red hat is from the same issue of the delineator as the two women on the previous page, September 1902. Again, why this one picture and not the others? The grocer's smile from the Ladies' Home Journal, February 1903, may have influenced Marilla's comment about the premiere in Chapter 18 of Anne of Green Gables. Quote, such a nose as that man had, unquote. The cover of the September 1902 issue of Ladies' Home Journal was one of the first items Christy Wooster found in her search for the sources of pictures in the scrapbooks. It is not clear where the fabric circles came from. I had hoped to find some of the same fabrics in the crazy quilt Ellen Montgomery made in the 1880s, but haven't found any that match. The cover of the, of the September 1902 issue of The Delineator shows a woman in a black evening gown with pink flowers. The fabric circles may have been inspired by Delineator issues from 1902 and 3. A few examples of the Delineator's use of fabric circles in the 1902 and 3 issues. So far, the oldest known clipping in the two scrapbooks and undoubtedly the best known, is a clipping of the poem that inspired Montgomery from the beginning of her writing career and throughout. The Fringe Gentian. It is from a serial story in Godey's Lady's Book from March 1884. Ella Montgomery was nine years old at that time. The serial, called Tam, the Story of a Woman, ran from January 1884 to June 1885. The authors of the story were Ella Rodman Church and Augusta de Bubna, both authors and poets, and who must also have been the authors of this poem. The source of the poem was found by Ella Montgomery Literary Society member Carol Gabery, who reported it in the Kindred Spirits newsletter in 1989. The young girl holding a sheaf of Madonna lilies and looking rather saintly is from the May 1901 issue of Ladies' Home Journal. It's part of an advertisement for B.T. Babbitt's Best Soap. Montgomery mentioned Madonna lilies in Anne of Green Gables as well as other works. Another article about Madame Henriette Rahner from the Ladies' Home Journal, November 1899, yielded these four pictures of cats from Montgomery's cat page. This article from Ladies' Home Journal, November 1902, three years later than the previous article, provided six more pictures for the cat page. Again, one might ask, why were these selected and the others left out of Montgomery's scrapbook? This picture is from a 1910 issue of The Ladies' World, some eight years later than other cat pictures on the page. 
The mother and child portrait appeared six months after Bella Montgomery's Prince Albert friend Laura Pritchard Agnew's son was born in July 1902. The Ruffled Pansy is from the John Lewis Childs catalog of 1904. One wonders why Montgomery trimmed off the blue-edged white petals of the pansy, perhaps to fit the space. These baby pictures are from the Ladies' Home Journal Christmas 1902 issue. Note the babies in the bowls on the lower left and lower right, inspiration perhaps for the photos of Stuart in Montgomery's journal entry for July 6, 1916 and the scene in Rilla of Ingleside when Rilla carried baby Jim's home in a large soup tureen. The poem, When the Cows Come Home, originally appeared in the Illustrated Christian Weekly in August 1875 and was reprinted extensively according to the Labor Journal of May 1888. The source of this clipping has not yet been determined, but may have been from a local paper. Montgomery wrote several poems featuring cows, Going for Cows, and Milking Time from 1902, for example. Here we see the page on which an unfortunate pitch from the Ladies' Home Journal, February 1903, written by Ben Mikado, appeared. More about that on the next slide. The poem, Little Brown Hands, by Mary Kraut, tells of children not only gathering wildflowers and seashells, but also tossing the hay and driving the cows home. The last verse must have been as significant to Montgomery as those in the French gentian. Those who toil bravely are strongest. The humble and poor become great. And from those brown-handed children shall grow mighty rulers of state. The pen of the author and statesman, the noble and wise of the land, the sword and chisel and palette shall be held in the little brown, ta- brown hand. It was first printed in a collection of poems entitled Child Life, edited by John Greenleaf Whittier in 1871, was reprinted extensively in periodicals and school books. The poem was written when Miss Kraut was 15 years old. Back to an unfortunate pitch. It was an ad for the Ivers and Pond Piano Company. It uses musical notation to spell words, a technique known as a rebus or pictogram. The farmer's horse was frightened and the wagon tipped, causing bags of grain to spill. But with help, he reloaded and went on his way to sell the grain and buy a piano from the Ivers and Pond Piano Company. The Mule Barometer, patented February 1906, echoes a British custom of hanging a strip of seaweed on the porch to judge the weather. That is, if the seaweed were dry, the weather would be fair. If wet, it was raining, etc. In the case of the mule, the tail would predict the weather using the same method. Many businesses apparently distributed this mule barometer as an advertising piece. Christy found one for her collection from J.B. Carroll in Chicago. Montgomery's is from the Page Wire Fence Company, Walkerville, Toronto, Montreal, and St. John, New Brunswick. There are many more sources of items, but the time limit here prevents showing all of them. Again, the table of contents in preparation will list all that we have found thus far, and I will continue to search for more. While looking through hundreds of periodicals searching for scrapbook item sources, I became aware of many similarities in the stories and poems of Ella Montgomery and those in the periodicals. Many stories featured characters down on their luck, orphaned, striving to better themselves, mistaken identities that resulted in happy endings, and so forth. These are themes Montgomery used frequently. Poems with nature themes were very prominent. Occasionally, I ran across items that were more than similar. They seemed to have inspired specific scenes in Montgomery's work, especially Anne of Green Gables. For instance, this illustration from a piece in The Youth's Companion caught my eye immediately. Even though it was published about ten years before Montgomery said she began her work on Anne, the coincidence is striking.
no pun intended. Another youth's companion piece from 1900, much closer to the time Montgomery began work on Anne, is this story about orphaned 11-year-old Sarah Bell. There are so many similarities to the first few chapters of Anne of Green Gables that it is hard to ignore them. The March issue may even have inspired Montgomery's setting Anne's birthday in March. So, from seed catalogs, to magazines for young people, to fashion magazines, from literary magazines, to international newspapers, women's magazines, to cartoon magazines. From the 1880s to at least 1910, the newspapers and magazines, cards, calendars, and advertising materials that Montgomery had access to and kept reflect a a wide range of reading materials, much of which influenced her day-to-day life as well as her career. She would even publish poems and stories in some of the periodicals represented in these two island scrapbooks. Youth's Companion, Ladies' Home Journal, Ladies' World, Delineator, Munsey's, The National, Boys' World, all of which accompanied her along her upward climb on that path so hard, so steep, that led to heights sublime. <laughs>